Join us on a journey into the stranger side of the NHS. You know, I don't think homeopathy as a method would be at all controversial if we didn't actually use the medicines that we use. Like from Venus? No, man. No, I've <laughs> tried real. that. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a strange practice. Indeed it is, and I, I would have every sympathy with people who, who have that opinion. Homeopathy, an alternative therapy, is controversial and, frankly, a little odd. Tonight we reveal how it's penetrated the heart of the Scottish NHS and ask, is it dangerous? Do you think that giving those three remedies are as safe and offer the same protection as the MMR vaccine? I would like to say that they were safer, but I can't prove that. The boy is fine. He's great, 100% well. You put that down solely to the homeopathic remedy? I do, definitely. Which cured his cancer? Yes. Water, an elemental force. But can remedies which conventional medicine says is nothing more than water be used to treat serious illness? Tonight, we can reveal that this system, which some dismiss as magic water, has found a special home in the Scottish NHS. Homeopathy, a medical system which uses water to dilute natural ingredients, is at the heart of a battle in the NHS. Many doctors argue that the approach, founded by an 18th century German doctor, has no clinical evidence to prove it works. Across Scotland, NHS money is being spent on therapies which most of us don't understand and might find very strange. So how much do people really know about homeopathic medicine? Right, scientific test time. Six bottles of water, each labelled with an ingredient which may or may not be included in a homeopathic remedy. The question is, how many people will be able to spot the real ingredients from the ones we've made up? So, our ingredients are... Hyena saliva, fairy tears, donkey whiskers, light from Venus, bee fur and antimatter. Saying donkey whiskers is real because it sounds like something that we just throw aside. Sounds so like it's got to be real. Like an old-fashioned old fashioned medicine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It might have stuck around. That one? Fairy tears. You think fairy tears is yeah, real? Fairy tears, yeah. man. Okay. Light from Venus. Yeah, man. I've tried that. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get a tan from the light from Venus? So the beef is real. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Quiet. Yeah. Donkey whiskers? No. No. Okay. Hey, beef is real. Uh, oh, fair from a bee. Real. Oh, yeah. I think antimatters is what I know. Yeah, see antimatters. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, here's the answers. Hyena saliva, antimatter, and light from Venus are real homeopathic ingredients. And the others, well, they're fake. How did you do? So our test was just a bit of fun. But what it shows is the general public don't really understand homeopathy. But we're all still paying for it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ian. Thanks very much. We used the Freedom of Information Act and government figures to reveal the extent of NHS homeopathy. We discovered that last year in Scotland, 30,000 NHS prescriptions for homeopathic medicines were written, largely by GPs. What's really interesting is if you compare that figure to England, it's less at 26,000, which means that per person we're writing more than 10 times as many homeopathic prescriptions here in Scotland. With little public understanding of the medicines, yet thousands of prescriptions being written, I wanted to find out more about them. Hello, I'm Stephen. Nice Welcome. I came to see the founder of Freeman's, Scotland's biggest homeopathic pharmacy. 
Dr. Stephen Kane manufactures the medicines, or remedies as they're called, according to a method devised by homeopathy's founder, Samuel Hahnemann, over 200 years ago. What are you going to make for us today? OK, well, first of all, we start off with the mother tincture, which is the strongest form of a homeopathic medicine. This particular one is called Critigus. It's the Hawthorn, and it's used for cardiac problems. And the second stage uh, is what's known as potentization. It's called potentization because although it dilutes the medicine chemically, it actually enhances it therapeutically, which is a very strange concept altogether. Dr. Kane takes one drop of the mother tincture and mixes it with 99 drops of water. Then we take that first bottle out and we succuss is the name of the process that we use. In Hahnemann's day, of course, he used the family Bible. And the reason being that the leather case of the family Bible gave uh, gave a little bit uh, and allowed the correct mixing motion to take place. Now, why do we succuss it in that way? We don't really know. Some people say that it may have uh, imparts energy to the solution. Uh, that may be the case, but I tend to think that it's merely a good mixing process that we have here. Dr. Kane then repeats the dilution and succussion process over and over, as many as 200 times. We continue the process all the way up the line, getting weaker and weaker chemically, but stronger therapeutically. Now, at this level, and at this level indeed, up until about that level, we have molecules in solution which we can find. There are still molecules in solution of the active drug. We're diluting it by a factor of 100 all the way along there. When we get there, we then get to a point where we do cannot find molecules of the drug present with methods that we have available today. So, even Scotland's leading homeopathic pharmacist says this medicine is scientifically indistinguishable from water. Watching this, you can see how people argue that homeopathy is strange. It's a strange practice. Indeed it is, and I, I would have every sympathy with people who, who have that opinion, and indeed I've been involved in it for 40 years and I still find it difficult in times to, to understand how these things could, uh, could possibly work. But patients uh, do get better, so there's something in there, but quite what there is, um, I have uh, little idea, to be honest. So, even the people who make these remedies don't pretend to understand how they work. It doesn't sound like the usual way the NHS functions. In Paisley, I hope to find out how medical professionals explain prescribing these remedies. Dr. Sarah Ma qualified as a GP 40 years ago. Like many, she was trained to be sceptical. So what was your attitude towards homeopathy? Total quackery. I just thought, what a load of ballyhoo. How can something diluted down cure things? This is ridiculous and no belief in it at all. Then, as part of her professional development, she attended a course in homeopathy out of curiosity. Her first patient was Carol, whom Dr. Ma had been treating with conventional medicine for years. Carol's list of ailments, both physical and psychological, was long. It was a mess. I was almost confined to being indoors. Um, I had claustrophobia, agoraphobia and panic attacks. So I said to her one night, what about popping in after the surgery and let's spend time together. And uh, I've started taking an interest in homeopathy just to see if we can help you a wee bit more. What were you told was in the remedy? Uh, Pulsatilla I knew was flowers, but I didn't know it. I thought I'll try anything, absolutely anything. After years of being prescribed conventional medicine, within just two weeks, Carol says her symptoms disappeared, all because of a dilute solution of flower petals. It worked for me, and I would say to other people, if you have problems, don't knock it, try it because it won't do you any harm 
if it doesn't do you any good. Carol was Dr. Ma's first homeopathic patient. But the GP went on to prescribe remedies on the NHS for the next 30 years before retiring recently. She insists homeopathy works, despite the skepticism of fellow doctors. Remember, I was one of them at one time, and till I was guided into trying out homeopathy, how it worked, how it changed my mind completely, and how now I would definitely prefer to go down the homeopathic route. And Dr. Ma is not alone in her conversion. A senior pharmacologist working in Aberdeen has conducted the only research looking at the full extent of homeopathic prescribing. He's Dr. James McClay. And what we found was about 60% of practices will prescribe homeopathic preparations to their patients. And then if you look at the doctors within those practices, it comes down to about 40% of doctors who will prescribe uh, these homeopathic preparations. So they're fairly widely used. Dr. McClay has also uncovered new evidence about just how many prescriptions are being written. He's been through government databases and found that some medicines listed under so-called dummy headings are in fact homeopathic remedies. If you add them to the ones we already know about, it doubles the total to about 60,000 prescriptions a year. James McClay's research shows that homeopathy has effectively penetrated the heart of the NHS, GPs. That really did surprise me, and it, it concerns me. Why? We are duty-bound as doctors to use uh, proven, evidence-based medicine. We, homeopathy is not proven, and it's not evidence-based. Uh, and that is a concern. That view has been gaining momentum. The British Medical Association recently formally came out against NHS homeopathy. But homeopaths claim their patients are getting better and the Scottish NHS has thrown itself into supporting the practice. It's a leap of faith. Question. Does homeopathy work? What is the evidence? Skeptics of homeopathy say it's not complicated. There's an easy way to tell if the practice works. I met up with Dr. Ben Goldacre, a leading critic of homeopathy. He explained the simple process, a clinical trial. So what you do is you take 200 people who come into your clinic with a problem and then you split them into two groups of 100. 100 people see a homeopath, they get prescribed a homeopathic pill and they receive that pill and continue to take it and then you see how fast they get better. The other 100 people, they see the homeopath, the homeopath chooses whichever of the many different homeopathic pills they want to give, it's prescribed to the patient but at the very last moment without the patient's knowledge and that's crucial, the homeopathic pills are switched for sugar pills which haven't been treated by a homeopath, sugar pills which are just normal sugar pills which are indistinguishable from the supposed real homeopathy sugar pills. And the idea of that is the patient doesn't know whether they're getting a genuine homeopathic sugar pill or just a normal everyday sugar pill. And then you compare the two groups, you see who gets better faster. Now what happens is when you take all of the trials that have ever been done like this and put them all together and take only the best quality ones, the ones which are fair tests, what you find is people on homeopathy do no better than people who are just getting normal sugar pills. Mm -hmm. 